peace and blessings, beautiful souls. I am Brandy L. Bates, and you're now listening to Power Podcasts. You can find me on Instagram at Brandy is Winning and on Twitter at Soledad Francis. Of course, you can find most of these talks archived on YouTube via the I Am Brandy Bates YouTube channel and find us on iTunes. Subscribe, like, share, dialogue, all that wonderful stuff. iTunes, SoundCloud, Podomatic.com, hashtag Power Podcasts. Today we're talking about the juggernaut spirit. The juggernaut has superhuman strength and durability. When you think of juggernaut businesses and corporations, you think of those entities that are too big to fail, quote unquote, too big to fail. Uh, Because strength and durability are what you'll need. Strength and durability are what you're going to need to do what you came here to do. To accomplish your goals and aspirations. Superhuman strength and durability is what you'll need to finish the race. To handle all of the adversity and trauma that accompanies life on this planet and in this dimension. I think that's um, one of the main reasons why many of us adore and worship uh, superheroes and larger than life celebrities and personalities who embody the abilities and the powers and the character um, of a juggernaut. Superhuman strength, durability, able to last throughout time, no matter what the genres are doing, no matter what uh, trends are trending, they're able to withstand and to last, right? Durability. And so we all have genius stitched into our DNA, but you know, so few actually know how to access it. Like all the rest of the magical abilities we have, which typically lay dormant at the base of our spinal cords, um, along with the Kundalini energy. You know, all of our abilities are there. That's why all the great ancient men and women, the warriors, the warrior queens, the uh, spiritual men and women, the yogis and the healers, they all have told you that everything that you need to survive and to thrive and to flourish is already within you, already embedded in your DNA. It's already in your body. It's already in your mind. You have to uncover it. You have to tap in and tune in to that juggernaut, your inner juggernaut, which is already embedded within you. And so how do you activate it? How do you reach juggernaut status, right? A juggernaut is 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 a is a literal or a metaphorical force regarded as mercilessly destructive and just sheer unstoppable. Just think of something that is completely unfuckwittable. That's the juggernaut status, right? And so to me, it, it, it means something overwhelming. And maybe the most difficult question raised in science ever is is called the hard problem or the binding problem. And it is the problem of how the immaterial world of our thoughts and feelings interfaces with the material world of our bodies. And so emotional states caused by our thoughts and our feelings are immediately reflected in the physiology of our body or our material world. In other words, when you're feeling, let's say you're upset, you're depressed, you're angry. That's why a lot of times they'll tell you to think happy thoughts. Think the most beautiful, purest thoughts you can think. Watch comedy, look at something funny, listen to something that will make you feel good, your favorite music, the smell, the scent, the aroma of your favorite food, baking or or um, 
scents that are reminiscent of a sweet time in your life will automatically begin to change the physiology of your body. Sometimes just standing up straight and smiling, it's really difficult to be angry and depressed and upset when you're smiling and you're jumping and you're dancing at the same time. See, a lot of times we do depression, we do anger, we do frustration, and it starts with the thought. That's why a lot of times negative people, they don't like positive, uplifting, optimistic, happy people because it makes them feel uncomfortable when they wanna stew in their darkness. And this is why and how we know that what we think over a sustained amount of time, we become. So you've heard, you know, thoughts are things, thoughts are things, thoughts are things, thoughts are things, right? Uh, we become what we think about. All the great wisdom teachers from Aristotle to Gandhi to Buddha have taught us that, right? As a man thinketh, in his heart, so he is, right? Well, the caveat to that, what they don't really tell you is that it has to be over a sustained period of time, not five minutes, 15 minutes, or even you know five days. Sometimes it takes five years, 15 years even. But sustained chronic thought and mindset will begin to crystallize and materialize in your, in your material reality. How our thoughts crystallize and materialize into things comes about from sustained, constant, chronic thought patterns. For instance, when an immaterial thought pops up in your brain to raise your hand, immediately your brain starts to produce neurotransmitter messengers that are carried along the nervous system and electrical impulses are sent to the muscles in your hand that will finally respond to your initial thought. So how is this possible? How can something as immaterial as thought have a real noticeable physical effect? And I'm saying it happens all the time in your body, all the time. In a split second, you can think a thought and it will cause your brain to pick up on the scents that are around you, the smell, the taste, the touch, to take in a certain amount of light into your, your photoreceptors, into the rods and the cones in your eyes, right? All of this is happening in less than a fraction of a second. That's why I tell you, you are, your body and your mind is a quantum computer. Your brain is a quantum computer. Every computer that you've ever worked, your mind and your brain and your body works more efficiently and effectively than even that computer. The personal computer is a replica of your quantum mind, juggernaut status. And so the translation your brain makes from the external stimulus of the visual cortex to the picture that you hold in your head is all from external electromagnetic wave patterns. That's what's going on, okay, in science terms, right? And so you may never have thought about it this way, but think about the color red or the color blue. The color red does not even exist. Do you follow me? The sky is not, nor has it ever been blue. <laughs> you know, and we know this. Science, no, most of us assume the sky is blue, right? This is science. The sky is not blue. The sky is reflecting every color but blue. And the color red, for example, is only a translation. It's a representation. It's like an avatar that makes sense to you. The color red is, 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 is a subjective construction of what is no more than an electromagnetic wave with a distinct frequency, a distinct amplitude, and a distinct phase. It moves in wave and it moves in particle, right? This is science, we know this, okay, thus far. Thus far with the current science that we know. Insects, for example, insects that only have two types of color pigment receptors. So you have to have receptors that are open to receive 
to pick up the different colors of the electromagnetic spectrum and the light spectrum. And you have insects that they only see, you know, uh, black and white. There are animals who only see black and white and shades of gray, right? Well, they have a completely different subjective representation of the very same color that you call red. Since they cannot see it, right, they'll perceive it as, as black. So you don't even know how your fellow humans perceive the color red, because we all see different things. We saw that a couple of years ago when this strange phenomenon, this meme was going around and it was a dress and they were like, is the dress gold and white or is the dress blue and gray? And you wouldn't believe how so many people collectively were in disagreement as to what this color was. But that is an example of the fact that we all perceive, we can all be looking at the same image, the same thing and be picking up different ideas and perceptions. And I'm here to tell you, you can only receive what you have the receptors to receive. In other words, you can only receive what you're open to, to carry. You can, you can't, you can't carry more than you're open to hold, right? You don't even, you don't even know what your limits are. And so where do you, where, where do you go? I'm talking to you now. Where do you go to breathe the ideas and execute on concepts that will raise the vibrational frequency of this dispensation. Cause you came here to do more than sit in a, in a cubicle. You came here to be more, to have more, uh, and to accomplish more than what most people have in mind for you. Dare I say what you may even have for yourself. And the juggernaut is considered one of the strongest and most powerful beings on earth. And know that for instance, the only unconditional love and care and genuine tender loving kindness that you are ever going to receive is mostly from your biological parents or those who raised you and poured life and breath into your lungs, right? Nobody else will give you those things. So once you understand that, you, you begin to stop seeking that in other people. That's part of the juggernaut status and the juggernaut spirit and the juggernaut essence is to understand. And some people might even see it as being uh, cold hearted or uh, brazen and, and, and brusque and uh, abrupt, right? Brash. But really it's a sense of understanding and knowing that you can't get blood from a turnip. And so many people keep banging their head against the same brick wall, trying to get blood from a turnip, trying to get unconditional love and tender loving kindness from uh, people. And you won't ever get that. You're always gonna be let down. Um, learn the ways of love. Our world will be a whole lot better off when the brilliance of your light shines. And when I say light, I'm talking about the light within your soul. Um, what makes you jump out of bed in the morning? What gives you effervescence and motivates you to stay up late at night, burning the midnight oil and working on your craft and sharpening your saw and grinding for whatever it is that you know, you're working towards. When you tap into your juggernaut essence, you'll really begin to see between the lines. Um, you're built to do epic work. Many of us are, and, and you are constructed to make a gorgeous impact. Um, there are future generations born of your children's children who need you to step up, who need you to show up, who need you to show out and make history. We only interpret a few uh, percentages of the whole spectrum of electromagnetic energy that exists. Notice I said we only interpret. I didn't say we only see. Because there are aspects of the, the electromagnetic spectrum that have sounds that we've never heard before. 
pitch, high pitch, low pitch. Uh, there are colors that haven't even been discovered yet. If you'll notice, you know, years ago, years, 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 many, many, many years ago, uh, you know, crayons, for example, when crayons were first invented, when we first started seeing crayons, there were maybe a couple of colors, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Now all of a sudden, you know, then there were 64 colors. Now there are like 182. And who knows how many there, there will be in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And that is because we're starting to explore more and more elements of that's just the color light spectrum along the light spectrum. I'm saying, when you tap juggernaut status, you will begin to perceive sounds you've never heard, uh, colors you've never seen. Uh, some people do it and access it through the use of uh, hallucinogenics and psychotropic drugs, um, things like LSD and magic mushrooms, things like that. But I'm saying there's a way to do it naturally and harness it and be able to control it and access it at will. You know, it's like a lot of people who are psychic, they just have glimpses of this gift, but they don't know how to harness it and control it. And again, it goes back to sustained, consistent, constant thought. Just like we see in the Fibonacci code, you see a pattern. There are patterns in everything in nature. There are patterns in music. There are patterns in snowflakes. There are patterns in the way the waves beat against um, the, the sea, the way the sea, the way the waves roll onto the beach, right? You have to mimic those patterns to make these things come about. We learned in school that our brain is a kind of supercomputer with loads of neurons firing at the synapses, processing, right? Processing the vibratory information that we receive from the five senses, what we hear, taste, touch, smell, feel. Our thoughts are personal and supposedly no one has access to them but us, right? Our memories are, are engraved into gray cells that constitute the brain, right? That's what we were taught. But that's what most people were taught in school and still believe today, even though we know better, right? In fact, we are able to experience memories which have been uh, passed down from our ancestors through our DNA. We used to believe that memories were stored as like engrams at a you know, specific location or specific addresses in the brain, right? Just as a computer stores its data in a specific memory location. We say, hey, if the brain is this super, super computer, then maybe it, it kind of mimics what we've made and we have it backwards. We, we know now that the universe is a huge repository of electromagnetic frequencies encoding multiple levels of reality. Multiple. Let that sink in for a moment multiple levels of reality. You have untapped spectacular magical powers as above, so below. But in many ways, your powers are trapped in another dimension and thus lay dormant in this dimension. A Japanese researcher, I talk about him all the time, Dr. Masaru Emoto, he demonstrated probably the most convincing and startling effects that human consciousness can have on physical reality. He discovered, right, that an effect on water that was given the name, the halo effect. Halo is the intrinsic vibration or vibrational pattern at the atomic level in all matter, all matter, all of it the smallest unit of energy, right, matter. So its basis is the energy of human consciousness. We know this. Dr. Masaru Emoto performed a series of experiments in which he proves that our thoughts and feelings affect our physical reality. 
he demonstrated that water as his subject um, water can take on the consciousness that we subject it to. And so he started out studying the shape of water crystals, ice crystals, and he used all sorts of water from all different places all over the world. And he studied how they would form ice crystals. And he noticed that water from heavily polluted rivers, okay, Flint, Michigan, right? Heavily polluted rivers don't crystallize at all. And that clean mineral uh, spring water produces all of these beautiful, magnificent, magical ice crystals when frozen, right? And to his amazement, he discovered the crystallization of the water molecules were somehow related to his mood. So he started experiments in which he used, he took clean tap water and he sent all kinds of human emotional thoughts and feelings to the water samples before freezing them, right? So one, he'd say, I love you, you're beautiful, you know, sending you love and light and abundance and wisdom and power. And then another one, fuck you, you're not shit, I hope you die, you piece of shit, you know. And to his astonishment, the water reacted to his intentions. And when negative thoughts and feelings were used, no beautiful ice crystals were formed. They were either chaotic in form or they didn't even crystallize at all. Hello, powerful self-talk, positive self-talk. Hello, positive affirmations, right? However, when he sent loving thoughts and feelings to the water before freezing it, the most beautiful and regular highly organized crystals formed. And in following experiments, he put stickers on the, on the bottles of water and he labeled them with words like love, God, and hate, and devil. And again, the ice crystals reflected the intention of the words he put on them. The words he said to them took form, the words he wrote on them took form. I remember when I worked in corporate America, I would always keep a cup of water on my desk and at, um, like a like a white styrofoam type of cup. And I would always write on it. And so I'd write different things like love and peace and prosperity and abundance and, you know, um, I'm rich, I'm successful. And, and believe it or not, there is so much truth to this. And you would think that with us knowing this in 2018, with us knowing this, we will watch our tongue. We will watch what we say, but we don't. And so understand you are constructed of both deity and demon. Juggernaut is already within you. You are constructed of both deity and demon, which is why you're capable of terrible evil and fantastic beauty and art. This is the substance of all humanity. This is the underlying texture of all human beings. It does not matter your socioeconomic status. It does not matter how much education you have or have not. If given your choice between a library and a fight, you'll undoubtedly go to the fight. This is why heavyweight boxers earn millions and, and librarians earn meager wages. We think the end justifies the means, however vile, however vile, whoever has to fall, right? By any means necessary, get rich, right? Get rich or die trying, no matter who you have to step on, right? This is why humanity all over the globe is entrenched in warfare entrenched in poverty and entrenched in pestilence. Our true, our true origins are shrouded in mystery. You have destructive aspects and you have constructive aspects. You have the ability to build and simultaneously to destroy. And the end is the means. 
by which you achieve it. I'm going to say that again because I know it's probably not going to sink in for a couple for a couple of days. The end is the means by which you achieve it. Today's step is tomorrow's life. Remember, consistent, constant, sustained thought. And I want you to know that as a juggernaut, you are capable and able to control the very fabric of the universe. And I know for some, that's a very hard pill to swallow, but you are able to control the very fabric of the universe. Once you understand that not only is time not linear, time is not linear, but time has been systematically used as a weapon. Stay with me. In oblivion, this is oblivion. Some would even say we are actually living in hell now. I won't go that far as to say that because I believe that uh, hell is a construct of the mind uh, much in the same way as heaven. But in oblivion, time moves fast, making people age. You can't hold time. You can't taste time. You can't drink time. You can't massage time. But yet we have daylight savings time. Time dictates when we wake up. Time dictates when we eat. Time dictates how long we do what we do. Time governs our days and it is used as a weapon. And for centuries, great, brave, lonely men have been telling you what to do. Time and again, we've corrupted, we've diminished, and demolish their teachings, right? From Nietzsche to Christ to Buddha to Muhammad. God made man and now man is remaking God in man's image. A warlike chaos being who leaves as much pollution and plunder and pestilence in his wake as he discovers alien technology. It's like the further we go, the further we advance, the worse off we damage the planet. The worse off we damage ourselves. And that's part of the juggernaut. That's part of the juggernaut spirit. It's the the yin and the yang. It's the darkness, the duality, the darkness and the light all in one all in the same entity. And so because you have no memory of things that happened 10 or 20 even years ago, you're still mouthing the same nonsense as 2000 years ago and none of us are living it. None of us are walking in it. None of us. Extensive research conducted on the effect of transcendental meditation showed that when practiced by a large group of people, they could substantially drop the con- the crime rate in a large city. Understand, you can cloak your city in love. You can cloak your city in abundance and wealth and prosperity. You can bring happiness. You can bring community with you wherever you go just in case there isn't any when you get there, right? So we now know, we know that places where people gather with their with their positive intentions to pray for better times may get permanently conditioned and become sacred places. Even after years and years being imprinted with the same intention, again, sustained, consistent, constant thought. In fact, someone listening to this right now Right now, you're where you are. Get this. You're where you are. Blessed and bawling because of the fervent prayers of a grandmother or a great grand aunt who you've never even met. But her prayers have kept you over the decades. Times when you know you should have been snuffed out. It might have been a car accident. 
It might have been a head-on collision. You may have been shot. You may have been stabbed. You may have been robbed. You may have been in a situation where it could have been you, but it was someone else. You've been spared and you don't know why. Build your house on granite. Universe doesn't know whether the vibration that you're offering is, is because of something you're observing or something you're remembering or something that you're just imagining. Speak life. It just receives the vibration and it answers it with things that match it, right? Speak life, speak love, speak health and wealth and prosperity, right? Every day when you wake up for the next 60 days, manifest health and healing in your bones and for those who you love, right? You can manifest more money and more business and clients and customers and multiple sources of income. You can manifest billions. Ask any billionaire. First, they had to be a millionaire. But how did they get to be, in a, mil be a millionaire self-made? They didn't earn it. They, I mean, they didn't, they didn't uh, inherit it. They earned it. It started with a sustained, constant, consistent, over time, thought. What you think about activates a vibration within you. Think about your favorite song. I mean, your, your shit, right? How do you feel? Now think about someone you hate. Think about someone who's hurt you. Who betrayed you. Think about someone who shit on you. Who let you down. How do you feel? Every thought you have activates a particular vibration within you. A particular pattern. A particular sequence of code. And if you want to take action in your life, take action towards removing your inner blocks to receiving the abundance that's already flowing all around you. Just like I said, you consist of both deity and demon. How is it possible that in the midst of so much privilege, there can be so much poverty? And out of poverty, come some of the wealthiest, most richest men and women, all residing under the same umbrella. You have to have your own personal experience. The map is not the lay of the land, right? The words are not the experiences. It has to be bigger than reading about it or seeing it on TV, though that helps, you know, that might help get you, you know, at least an idea of what you're looking for. But you are the creator of your own reality. The God who is the creator of worlds. You are the avatar. And the mind has the ability to produce every drug that Merck and GlaxoSmithKline sells only at no expense. In the purest form. Your mind can produce the purest form of MDMA. Your mind can produce the purest form of LSD. At no expense. Without having to get anything external out of the world. It's already, it, it, it can already be produced. And in the perfect dose. This is the juggernaut spirit in essence in action. The ability of the mind to heal the body explains the well-known placebo effect, right? You've heard of the placebo effect, right? The effect where a patient is cured by her own suggestion. Because she'll be given like a, a, a sugar pill, right? Or um, they'll tell her, oh, you, you know, you're being treated. We're going to, we're going to give you a, uh, a pill. We're going to treat you. And within a couple of months or weeks or years, she's, she's cured. She has no idea she was given a, a sugar pill, but the thought and the belief that this chemo is, is working, this, this antra, uh, ant, anti, what? anti-retrovirals, right? Antivirals. 
I'm cured. And the ability of the mind to heal the body is also the cause of miraculous, spontaneous remission of cancer. How do you explain how some people just all of a sudden, spontaneously, there were there were there were there were tumors and 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 and, and malignant tumors growing on top of tumors, and then suddenly nothing. We can't find it. Spontaneous remission. It happens all day, every day. Not to everyone. Again, sustained, constant, over time, consistent, sustained thought. No medical explanation. See, a diagnosis is not the end all be all. What your mind and your thoughts and what you say and believe it is, that's what it is. Not what some doctor told you. What you believe, what you receive. Because remember, you can only hold and carry what you're open to receive. Or think of the power of prayer, the power of prayer. How many people can tell you things they've prayed for and prayed about over time and how it worked in their lives. The imagination is chaos, folks. And new forms come out of, out of the imagination. That's, the imagination is limitless and endless. And the, crea the creative act is to let down the net of human imagination into the ocean of chaos on which we are suspended and then to attempt to bring out of it ideas. You are one idea away from totally revolutionizing your life. Your life can look completely different in the next seven to 10 years. Completely different. New house, new car, fleet of cars, private jet, boats, you know, yachts. Whatever, 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 you, whatever. And, you know, I have people that I've mentored who I've literally watch their life transform just working and operating off of, of what I'm talking to you about today. In ancient Rome, money, money was minted in the temple of Juno Moneta, Juno Moneta, the great mother in her aspect of, of advisor and admonisher. Understand the universe is feminine folks. God is feminine, but that's another talk. But she is the source of our words, money and monetary. Juno Moneta, Roman goddess, the goddess of memory. And she was also the most powerful of all goddesses in Roman mythology. That is to say, she's like the feminine essence of juggernaut. So when you think of this great, mighty, powerful juggernaut, and you think of Juno Moneta, that's the feminine essence of juggernaut which is to say that money and power always tend to go hand in hand, hand in hand. Those who have power are usually quick to manifest lots of money and vice versa. Those who have lots of money typically will notice how, how their power um, quotient goes up, right? Our human dependence on the living processes of the earth was largely forgotten with all of the, you know, industrialization and, and the oil barons and the railroad tycoons. And, and now we're being forced to remember that Gaia, Earth, the great mama is greater than we are. And that the human economy is embedded within the ecology of the biosphere. Remember the ends are the means to arrive there. And the juggernaut is one of the strongest and most powerful physical beings in the universe. Endless superhuman strength, endless kinetic power, capable of moving mountains. You can move mountains, not, yeah, not physically, but in the same way that water can wear down stone. 
the limits of juggernaut are unknown. You don't know your, your limits. You really don't know. You really don't know what you are capable of because most of you stop far short of your true potential. We all do. We all do. And most of us are operating on a fraction of our abilities and powers. And you are the only one who can defeat you. You're the only one who can stop you. So as I, you know, as I leave you today, up to this point, we've understand up to this point in history, up to this point in life, in the world, we have held the world upside down. We really have. It's not that consciousness is an effect uh, of the materialistic world. No, no, no. It's the very cause of it. Our thoughts, our feelings, our consistent, sustained, constant, over time thought are not limited to our body and internal experiences of, of reality, but have a true, measurable, tangible, provable effect on the outer world. And this is how you reach juggernaut status. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful, magical, magnificent rest of your day. The next 60 days, we are going to manifest a whole hell of a lot of health and wealth and wellness, prosperity and abundance, power, money, means. We're going to be blessed. We're going to be balling. But I need you to have constant, sustained consistent over time, watching your words, watching how you speak, watching how you think, watching how you move out in these streets. So you can be a juggernaut. Peace. Have a great one.